Uh, renowned scientist Stephen Hawking has paired up with a Russian billionaire and has launched a $100 million quest to find extraterrestrial life. UK correspondent Melissa Davies joins me now. Melissa, great to have you with us. So like a very intelligent man, he's using someone else's money to look for um, aliens. Yeah, uh, well, he's he's backed this project, saying it, it's a good idea, and that there are going to be some telescopes that are based, one's in the US and one's actually in Australia. Um, but yeah, it's this Russian billionaire who's just always had a fascination with extraterrestrial life. He read some book when he was ten, and it was always it's been his hobby ever since. Um, and he's put a hundred million US dollars into this. I mean, there have been these kind of surveys going on since the 1960s, but they've probably been a bit half-hearted. This one is going to be far more advanced uh, just because of that funding behind it. It'll so, um, Melissa, be what 50 are, times more sensitive. Sure. What are they doing, though? They're not looking for them, are they? They're listening for them, presumably. So these telescopes are more their sort of listening yeah. sites, aren't they? Yeah, it's, there's two things they're doing. They're going to be listening for radio transmissions and also they'll be doing an optical survey. So basically wow. what they're doing is listening for anything... They, looking for sound or light. Talk about needle in a haystack kind of stuff, though, when you're looking for these guys, because they'd be hard to see, but they're forever yeah. jabbering on to each other. So you'd be up, if you listen long enough, you'll hear them talking to each other, I'm sure. Um, all right, the Scottish accent is dying out. Uh, th there have been a lot of people looking at this and a lot of people wondering why, but it's the R's. The R's are disappearing. Yeah, researchers in uh, Glasgow, Glasgow um, have been researching, uh, they've been talking to the younger generation, they're looking at 12 and 13 year olds and what they're finding is they're not rolling their R's verbally so they're still making the same movement with their mouth but they're not actually uh, making that sound, that really strong thick accent sound although they have found that there's kind of a difference in uh, when you're looking at different socioeconomic groups so the working class are more likely to still say that, um, still make that movement with their mouth but not verbalize it whereas say middle class or upper class are saying their r's more like an american kind of r so why do they know um, why they're doing it well, do they, simply... uh, yeah do they know why melissa i think that a lot of people are saying that it's because there are so many english americans in their media there's mm. not enough scottish accents um, in the mainstream media um, but the researchers themselves think it's just kind of one of those natural progressions that happens in languages every now and then yeah because everyone's exposed to everybody else so you know obviously everything is watered down isn't it that's why we all drink coke um, mm. and finally i love this and i hope you're going to tell me that you are a regular at this bar where they do breathable booze so you literally go in and just breathe alcohol yeah, it's only just starting up, so uh, no one's been there yet, but it's called the Walk-In Cloud Bar. And um, basically you get all kitted up in protective suits to protect your clothing because they've got humidifiers that basically breathe a, a cocktail cloud. So they mix um, spirits and, and mixers and they just kind of fill a room with um, this humid... <laughs> A cocktail cloud basically um, it takes 40 minutes to absorb the equivalent of a large drink and so they're only letting people go in there for an hour at a time it is fewer calories though 40 percent less uh, less calories but um, it can get you drunk quite quickly because it bypasses right. the liver i wonder how well this is going to go so essentially you walk into a room with an emergency poncho on and it's just hazy so you can't really mm. see anything i suppose you could still listen to music and you mm. just breathe alcohol and you just sit mm. there. Do you sit there or do you stand there talking with alcohol dripping off your emergency poncho? Uh, yeah, from what I've seen, you just stand there. It doesn't sound particularly fun, really. Mm. I'm off the idea, actually. I am off the idea. All right, Melissa. <laughs> well, next time I'm in London, maybe we should go along to one of these outfits because they'll be operating by then if they haven't called it quits and find out whether or not it's fun. Um, thanks. Melissa Davies is our Europe correspondent.